Uh, here we go. Our next one, uh, Red Hood and the Outlaws. Now, I come into this... I know who all these characters are, the three of them that are on the cover, Starfire, uh, Red Arrow, Slash Speedy, and uh, Jason Todd, Red Hood. I know who they are. And I'm like, big deal, it's yet another bad book. And I open it up, and I loved it. Hey, that's... You know, you're not a Bat fan, per se. No. I'm a huge Bat fan, and I'm actually a huge Red Hood fan. I love Jason Todd. I love that he... I love the fact that I hated that they were bringing him back, and they made me love him. I was really looking forward to Red Hood and the Outlaws, and it did not disappoint. Um, the characterization of Jason Todd as a smartass made me laugh. His banter with Red Arrow was great. Are we calling him that? Are we calling him that? I don't know if he's speedy cause, or Red Arrow, but I'm going to go with Red, Red Arrow. I was Red Hood, Red Arrow. And Red Starfire. And Red Starfire. Uh, I'm going to go, I, yeah, I'm going to call him Red Arrow. Uh, the opening, uh, spoilers, where Jason busts him out of prison. Uh, it's solid. Solid banter, solid action. Yep. And then the fat lady sings, you know, when uh, Starfire comes in. Yeah. And you want this to, this is all part of the teen, or this Bat book. This is a Bat book. It's not part of the teen no, stuff. No, it's not. It's not part of the teen stuff. So what better way to do that than to have Jason say, oh, yeah, I've banged Starfire, and then Starfire going to ask Roy, hey, do you want to go have sex? Yeah. Now, a lot of you will probably have issue with the hypersexualization of Starfire. Yeah, but she's always been sort of half-naked all the time anyway. Yeah, she has. But here's where I think the one misstep in Red Hood and the Outlaws is. They introduce Starfire as being hypersexualized, where love doesn't matter, right? Right. Like, she can have sex, and it's... It's okay. It's okay, it's fine. Great. You can have a character like that. But do not show her cuddled to Red Arrow yeah, after it. Yeah, that's... Yeah. You know, it's like a misstep, right? Have Red... You know, Red Arrow cuddled to yes. Starfire. Yes. You get the laugh, and you also are true to the character. Yeah. It's almost gonna... like I know that comics are made like the audience is generally teen teenagers. And yeah, but how great would have that been? It would have been amazing. I would have laughed. It would be like Starfire is complete in complete control. Yeah. All the time. Excellent book. Uh, uh, might be my book of the week. Will it be? Pick it we'll up. We'll see, but definitely pick it up. Moving on. The police want you to <laughs> listen to us as we tell you about Green Lantern Corps. Uh, Green Lantern Corps, uh, after the Green Lantern last week and Red Lanterns last week, yep. we were talking about whether or not we were lanterned out. That's right. Green Lantern last week by Johns was amazing. Red Lanterns was good. Yeah, it was all right. Um, uh, here comes Green Lantern Corps, and where last week Hal was dealing with being on Earth again and not a Green Lantern at all, and he can't handle having normal life, here we see Guy and John wanting nothing but a normal life. Right. And there's, yeah, there's a great oh. uh, scene where they're talking about maybe we should have wore masks. Yeah, why didn't we wear masks yeah. like Hal and Kyle? Yeah. What a dumb move. But they both were like, no, nah, we wanted the glory. We wanted people yeah. to know who we were. And so it's time for them to go back into space. They go back to work on Oa, and uh, there's a big threat, and you get a taste of that threat throughout the book, and it's it's well done, I think. You know, Tomasi is one of my favorite writers. I thought, you know, Batman Robin last week was my book of the week. Um he does a great job here. I remember reading the first five pages where they introduced this villain. And I was like, wow, that that counts. Yeah. You know, like, I'm I'm pumped for this villain because it's, it's vicious, it's fast, it's a threat. Green Lantern Corps has it all. I mean, it's a great number one. Uh, builds on what's come before, but also sets this new, uh, maybe status quo of Green Lantern's not being able to truly have normal lives yeah. despite it. It's well, not, a lot of them don't. Like in the rest of the in the rest of the core, people are just, that's all I that's do. I'm a Green do. Lantern. Yeah. But I guess these guys were trying to have it all. Humans. What are you going to do? Uh, tying into Green Lantern a little bit, we have our uh, Blue Beetle. When Jaime Reyes first arrived, I bought every single issue because it was entertaining and it was fun. I 100% agree. When Blue Beetle first arrived. Yes, that I was not. I, look, I'm a Ted Cord fan. I love absolutely me I too. Mean, so I was like, oh, Jamie Reyes, they're gonna introduce this. Hi me. Hi me Reyes, they're gonna introduce this new character. But I loved it. I thought that that initial run was just amazing. And as we were saying before, when an origin works so well, try not to screw with it. Yeah. And they've screwed with it a little bit here. Now you get to see for for your new readers, you get to see where the scarab comes from. All the same characters are there, yeah. Aaron's Paco. But we were saying we wanted him to have it already. Yeah, I mean it was so good. It, it was almost like an unneeded 
you know, you could have maybe had a number one without completely uh, reinventing. But Bay I Beetle. Do, but I do like the go, going from outer space craziness to high school. Oh no! Perfect. And something about that. I Again, love. It, Blue Beetle is not a bad book. No, it, it's actually a great book. It's just the other book was also great. I'm hoping that the same kind of fun that was in the uh, last Beetle run is in this one. If they can capture the fun and and bring it back into this book, it'll be a, a hot seller. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the next one for yeah. sure. Here we go, another bat book this week, Birds of Prey. Don't be uh, shocked uh, when you pick up this book and uh, see only two of these people in it. Well, Katana's in it, but it's kind of like, hey, go... A picture go... of Katana is okay, in it. Okay, recruit Katana later. So there's two people in it right now, and then Barbara Gordon's in it as well, and I don't think uh, Gail Sabone knew Barbara was going to be in it, which is causing a bit of a problem. Uh, but uh, as far as setup goes, pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I enjoyed the book. Um, again, you know, some of the costume designs I'm totally okay with. Some of them I'm not. Um, Black Canary... I like her new outfit. Just put a leather jacket on her. Some characters have such a great look to begin with. Yes. That, you, know, you don't need to but, reinvent but them. But come on. Like you've said, we've said the same with Superman. Yeah. Flash has changed a bit. Yeah. Uh, Batman, Wonder Woman. But how long before, of all the characters, Black Canary goes back? Uh, be, two, know, more weeks. Two, more, <laughs> two, two more weeks. Two more Two more issues. Two Black Canary is one of those characters that they keep changing her and trying on a different costume. Oh, remember the big shoulder pads in the 80s so with it, the headband? That stupid headband? Yeah, Why would you ever wear a, a headband? A friend of mine bought the action figure because he's like, it will never go back to that. And I said, thank you. You're the one person who bought that yeah. action figure. Yeah, you, you look like a dunce with a it headband. It will go on. back to the classic black leather jacket, black jumpsuit, fishnets or not, doesn't matter. She can have lycra, but it, it works for that character. Yeah. Um, the the new uh, Starling, the Starling. New character. I actually like. Fun. I mean, again, they're they're creating this Birds of Prey being outlaws, similar to Red Hood and yep. the Outlaws. Um, you know, a similar thread going through. I enjoyed the book. Um, I still prefer Oracle and you know Black Canary yeah. as the team, but we'll see where it goes. It was a good start. Here we go with Wonder Woman number one. Brian Azzarello, Cliff Chang. I love Cliff Chang's artwork. You can't say enough about Cliff Chang. I love like, talking that, about him all the time. That Doctor Thirteen, uh, oh, so good. And this is just the artwork is so great. Uh, and uh, I think Azzarello's story. Uh, there's a lot happening. A lot goes on in here. Yeah. And you get to see some major threats. And you get to it sets up. It's a different Wonder Woman. It's like a the, very different Wonder I mean, Woman. If you're going into Wonder Woman with kind of some preconceived notion of who Wonder Woman is. Yeah, throw it out the window. what her backstory is or whatever. I mean, this is all new. This is all fresh. This, it has elements that you may be familiar with, but it's very, it feels different. But you gotta know, like, and we've always known that Wonder Woman is a warrior. Yeah. And she's Amazon, so she's a big girl, like a tall, she's a yeah. beefy she's warrior. She's a powerhouse. There's a lot of blood in this. Uh, it's great. Uh, yeah, it feels really different. I mean, and I like that. I'm I'm looking forward to what's new. It's it's I, I you know I just keep saying it. It's different. You may not initially like this take of Wonder Woman, um, but it's exciting. It's a really interesting book. It's really exciting to see her kicking ass. Uh, it, the threat is there. Yeah. Her mission shows up at the end. Like it's all. It's all there. Azarello likes to place his pieces before he finishes the puzzle. And it's so really good. Definitely pick it up yeah, this week. Yeah, give it a couple issues and then make your decision. We're going home with Batman. Yes. Uh, so many Bat books this week. and I did not mind at all. I know. But I, as I said last week, what's the difference between Batman and Robin and Detective Comics? Right, right. And then this week we get Nightwing, Birds of Prey. Catwoman. And this. And Batman. <laughs> and there's a lot of Bat. Yeah. When ha when your relaunch is fifty two issues and fourteen of them tie into Batman, it sells. I know it the sells, but sell. how is this book going to be different from the other Batman books? Scott Snyder's writing it, and he wrote Swamp Thing, and I like that very much. And I like this book a lot too. I thought that it was brilliant. Snyder knows these characters inside and out. He jams a lot of stuff into this book. Um, Damien says one line. Oh, and, and it's perfect. It's perfect. There's like a nice family shot. Yeah, in one line, Damien is Damien. He you know, steals the show. Uh, Dick Grayson is amazing. His banter between Bruce. I mean, S Snyder just has a way with the voices of the characters. You can tell he's a fan. You can tell that he gets the bat 
family. Yeah, and he and that's uh, I think the emphasis of this is that it's a family, and he trusts that family right. implicitly. And the dyna- and it's a brilliant uh, plot device that allows for you to to um, get a quick uh, who's who. Yeah. He introduces a computer element that... Uh, like to a contact lens that goes facial recognition and analyzes everybody right, right away. So it's a little clever way of letting new readers in on who these people are. Yeah, you're almost like those Legion boxes. Right, but... More effective. More effective. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, the book itself, uh, again, uh, as I said, this is my English major popping up on me. Uh, there's a new character introduced. And a new villain. And a new villain. So I'm putting two and two together. However, he promises me... That Scott Snyder will not do that. Right. Well, I mean, Scott, don't let me down. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there's a twist at the end. Which is phenomenal. Phenomenal. And I have to say, there was a bit of a question there uh, last week or two weeks ago when Alfred was a hologram. Right. And I think a lot of people were worried that Alfred actually was a hologram yeah. and Alfred wasn't around anymore. Yeah. Alfred's around. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it's kind of cool to see Bruce doing something for the city. Yeah. I mean, we're, we are, with this and Batman and Robin, we're looking at uh, Bruce Wayne that's looking to, to the, the future. future. Instead of constantly to the past. Which is, again, a nice, fresh take on Batman. Absolutely. And, uh, hey, uh, I'm sorry to say, but uh, one of my favorite characters in all of Batman showed up, uh, Harvey Bullock. Yeah. I love Harvey Bullock. And he's great in this. He's really good yeah. in this. Doesn't... He's standing there looking, and Batman lands behind him, and he doesn't even move. Okay, he's like, so no, great. tell me. Batman 1 is your book of the week. No, I wouldn't say that yet. We'll get to that. We'll get to these books of the week. But first, it's time to go to Red Tornado Watch. There is no Red Tornado in this week's comics. Okay, uh, here we go. Uh, Books of the week, uh, as recommended by me. Uh, A lot of these are the same, because overall, we were saying that this week was a really good week. It was an excellent week for comics. So, uh, Batman. My book of the week. All right. Uh, I'm gonna go Dead Man. Or sorry, DC Universe presents. I agree. You have to pick up this book. It's a great uh, starter for Dead Man. Uh, Catwoman, ladies, get your wow. paws on this book. Wow. Uh, there we go. Red Hood and the Outlaws. God, I'm picking a lot of bad books. Um, he's he's converting. Green. I'm not converting. <laughs> Green Lantern Corps. Excellent book. And uh, for me, Wonder Woman. Uh, which I really enjoyed. Um, and this is where we differ. I thought Wonder Woman was a great book. Uh, you know what? And I might come back and say it was a brilliant start after I read the next couple. But for me, it being a Bat fan, it, Nightwing um, by Higgins and Barrow um, is my pick. So not a bad week considering uh, there were 12 books. You know what? Last week I felt was was good but not great. Yeah. And I felt that this week the comics were just overall more enjoyable. Yes. Fun. Um, you know, still disappointed with the Legion. You know. Yeah, I want the Legion to be so much more. Yeah, but as a Bat fan, the Bat books are really good. So next week is the last week of the new number ones. Yeah. We'll be dealing with people we know yeah. after that. Yeah. So next week we're looking forward to Aquaman, All Star Western, Batman Dark Knight. Another come on. I, I really hope Finch can pull this out. I was not happy with his Black Dark Hawks, Night. which I'm going to be surprised I'm to read. I'm looking forward to Black Hawks. Flash. I'm looking forward to... I am kind I? of am, maybe, we'll see. Uh, this is that messing with the... Right, Justice League Dark. Oh, yeah, I'm Justice League Dark. That. Firestorm! Yeah. A big fan. Yeah. Oh, no, come on, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Savage Hawkman, I'm mm, interested to I'm read I'm more it. excited to see Teen Titans. Superman, Teen Titans, yeah. Voodoo, I... and I, Vampire. The, I'm going to say this. While I'm excited about all these books, those two books are the two I'm dreading the most. I Vampire, we have been bad mouthing I Vampire <gasps> from the start. Go change our minds. Will I Vampire make us eat crow? Will Voodoo be more than just the stripper scenes I've seen online? If it's not more than the stripper scenes you've seen online, is uh, that no? I'll, I I hope will... there's more to it, but I'm still gonna read it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, we'll see you next week. Bye bye.